Hello, good morning, and welcome to Fibertown. I'm Emily. This is episode 82. It is the last day of September 2014, and I am... I'm glad to see you guys. Although I can't see you, I'm glad that we're chatting. Um, I have the house to myself, finally. It's been a long time. I'm enjoying the quiet. I've been spinning a little bit with Alice in my lap this morning, and now she's eating her breakfast. And I just thought, I need to show everybody all the stuff. So here I am. Um, let me do a few welcomes first, and then we'll get started with the to-do list. Three people to say, or who introduced themselves in the thread in the RAV group. And you can find me there, and you can find me on Instagram, I'm Fibertown with an R-E, on the blog, fibertown.blogspot.com, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Rav, Instagram, and the blog, and the YouTube, and the iTunes. Okay, Becky Ann, who is Becca, and she is living in Delaware right now. Um, they're stationed in Delaware, so military, moving around. Um, she's a longtime watcher, so thank you so much. And she knits, spins, weaves, and guess what? Her husband spins, too. That's really cool. Um, so yay, I'm super glad you introduced yourself. Hi, Becca. Maybe if you make it down to this area, we can hang out at a yarn store. Um, then we have two ladies from Texas who introduced themselves. Those would be, let's see, Ann Ranit, who is Dreda from Texas. I said Texas. She's from Texas. Texas, Texas, Texas. It's a big state. Um, Let's see, she has recently gotten seriously into knitting and found the world of podcasts, isn't it great? And it's like free entertainment and just hanging out with folks who like what you like. Um, let's see, she's also started to spin, yay! And she said her spinning isn't so good so far, but I bet it's really good. And it's one of those things, it's a practice, like the practice of yoga or the practice of meditation, the practice of spinning. Um, it's something, it's a lifetime thing, right? And the goal is never perfect yarn. The goal is yarn you like to make and knit with. And then we have Mel Gill, who is Michelle, also from Texas. And let's see, she, what does she say? Oh, she likes hearing about spinning too. I'm glad because I know not everyone's a spinner. And she says it's new to her, but she likes hearing about it. That's how I got into it. I listened to the Knit Girls and the Knit More Girls and who else? other lovely podcasters, and I was like, yeah, I want that. That's how it starts. Um, she's a big crocheter. That's how I started out in the fiber artses. And let's see. She likes Alice. Alice says, hi, Alice. It's kind of chilly and gray, so Alice has been glued to me, Velcroed to me. But right now, she's, I don't know if you can hear her. She's running around with a toy. I'm in my kitchen again. Lest you have forgotten, stop it and catch up with the best. You'll relish the flavor. Okay, y'all. Thank you for buying patterns. And the proceeds are, of course, going to Silly Fruits Fund, Wendy Graham, who is ill and fighting um, a rare form of leukemia. I will give you a total soonish. Um, it's about, I think right about now we have about 40 to $50 to donate to her fund. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you have used the coupon code, the coupon code FRU, it's a coupon code. It's just FRU, F-R-U. It's good for a dollar off my patterns. I'm not sure when I'm going to stop that. I'll let you know. But for now, it's good, probably till mid-October. And it's a little incentive for you to spend a few bucks in my RAV shop and get a pattern for it, or if you have the pattern, gift it to a friend, and the proceeds go directly to fruit. <coughs> Thank you so much for the condolences. Um, it has been overwhelming, and I uh, thank you so much. My, uh, we laid my grandmother to rest this weekend, and she has a beautiful spot under a magnolia tree near some colonial graves. There's a brick wall and uh, in a beautiful place in Virginia. So thank you very much. That was, it's done. So I'm glad we're moving on um, to the next step of things, which is probably equally as hard, but at least we're moving on. 
Okay, we're going to turn this episode on its head a bit from our usual way of doing things, and that means that I'm going to talk mostly about acquisitions. I have piles of stuff all around me. They are things I bought this weekend at Shenandoah. They are things that have been given to me. They are... It's just a whole lot of fun. So we'll do the acquisitions first. Hi, Alice. And we'll talk about the festival as we go through the things I got there. And then we'll talk about spinning and whips. So it's going to be backwards today. I didn't plan to do an Ask Fiber Town. So we'll see how it goes. Hello, this is Alice. She missed me when I was gone this weekend. I heard she mainly stayed by the back door waiting for me to come home. And when my family came home without me on Saturday, she searched all through the house for me. <laughs> She's a good girl. All right, let's go by and go down and play. All right, there's no room for you up here. I'm sorry, go. Find a way through all of the stuff. All right, so <coughs> I was able to go to Berryville where the festival is held towards the end of the day on Saturday. And I arrived at the festival uh, going on four o'clock, so there was an hour left. Do you know where I went first? It's not what you might think. I went first to Reflections at Rocklands because I knew that Kate, the amazing Kate, Boss, Kate Bostick, is that her? Let me get her card. Kate Bostick, I wanna say, yes, Kate and John Bostick. Reflections at Rocklands. And there's a spelling. Rocklands.com. Um, I knew she was holding this for me, and I so appreciated it. She's really good at communicating with her customers, and oh my gosh, it's spilling out of its bag. <laughs> Look at that. There's my Rambouillet, folks. I have a pound of this beautifully prepared top. I bet she put more than a pound in there. She's done that for me before. She adds a little extra. Look at that. Look at the coils. You are so jealous right now. Yes, you are. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I'm very happy. I have waited for quite a while for this. And Kate did hold it for me, not only for Saturday, because i had been emailing her every six months. Is it ready? Is it ready? She was waiting on her mill, which is a small mill, a local mill to her which I appreciate. She's keeping her business in the community. Um, they had had some, you know, family issues like you do, and it's finally ready, and it is worth the wait. Now, I just spun her Cormo up yester yesterday, <laughs> last time I showed you all the Cormo. Um, her sheep, she raises her sheep. You can check out her website. They are prize-winning sheep and prize-winning fleeces. They are exquisite. And why am I telling you all about this? Because now I'll never get any more. But I have a pound, so I'm very pleased. Um, so she is wonderful. She was like, you know what? You've been such a good customer. You've waited so long. I'm giving you. She gave me a discount on this pound of fleece, of top. Couldn't say more nice things about her. So that was where I went first. I don't even know where to start. OK. Um, of course I went to Gourmet Stash. Of course I did. Where is my stash of Gourmet Stash? Uh, and she was sharing a booth, so to speak, with the Spanish Peacock this year. They were connected. It's a big setup of beautiful spindles and then beautiful fibers and yarn. Let me show you what I got from Kate. And I wanted it all. Um, this is a wee dram out of Regal Yarn, which is a Merino Yak Silk. 400 yards of a fingering, a wee dram of whiskey. Yes, please. I have been into the whiskey lately. Um, we had a whiskey tasting. Um, I was able to stay in Kate's hotel suite, um, which is why I was able to get there on Saturday. And we had a Outlander viewing party and we tasted some wee drams. Yes, we did. Uh, Highland Park, the Balvenie, Glen Livet, 16 year, was it 16 or 15? In the French oak casks. Then we had some Islay, and they're just so super peaty. I can only, they're very challenging for me. And why am I talking about whiskey? 
Okay, because of this, the wee dram. Look at that color. Stunning. Okay, so there was that. Then I picked up this bit of gorgeousness. Driving at night, stellar top. This is ice dyed, four ounces. Now this is probably the last of this because this was from her collaboration with Hobbledehoy, the end of summer playlist. I'm going to spin this and pair it with the great Gatsby that I got and make a day break or something two colorish. Love that. It's got sparkle. It's Selena and so forth. More purple fiber? Yes, yes indeed. This is, what is this called? I know it's a yak silk. What does she call it? Majestic roving, two ounces. Let me take this out. This is the Samhain colorway. This is the same base as my water weed that I have on my bead whirl right now and I'm getting that out for you. Sorry about all the bending and out of the framing, but you should see these two things together. I've always loved, ever since I was a kid, I've loved purple and green together. Again, I think this has to be a two color something. Just so precious, so precious. So there's that. And you know what, let me take the driving at night out of its bag so you can see it better. I've explained how she does her ice dyeing. Super cool. Um, this is the Stellar Top, so it has Stellina and Superwash Merino. Lovely purples. Sucker for the purples. I want to get some of this colorway in her yarn and make a big shawl. And she has a red that is my perfect red. It's called Blood of My Blood. And I need a sweater's quantity, Kate. Yes, I do. Okay, um, is that all I got? No, I got one more thing from Gourmet Stash. I did sample knitting for her, so. Ooh, what is that that just fell? Okay, hang on. My tag fell off. This is more yarn. Punk rock. Stout sock. It's a Coriadale nylon. 75-25. Oh my gosh, look at the speckles, everybody. Look at the speckles. These will be socks. They're super squish squish. And Corydale is a, is a good sock yarn. It's sturdy, longer staple. Should wear better than a merino sock. Love, love what I got there. I could have bought everything else. Oh, I got boonies too. Yes, I did. You cannot not get the punies. They're just so perfect for spindle spinning, supported spindle spinning is, is in particular. This is Smaug's Diamond Waistcoat. And I've got more in this Spanish Peacock bag, but let me just show you a sampling. Here they are. Here they are. Punies, punies, punies. Now, I enabled two of my friends this weekend to learn how to support spindle. I taught them both. They both caught on so fast. What's wrong with me that I took me forever to learn? Um, they both caught on. They both bought a Spanish peacock. They both bought punies. Actually, it was really funny. Um, did Darcy buy punies? I hope she did. But I know Angie did for sure. And I showed her <coughs> how to support spindle. I first gave her a little bit of alpaca roving to spindle with. She did okay. And then I said, here, take this. And I gave her one of the punies and she was blown away. She said, this is amazing to spin with. This is so easy to spin with, especially for this kind of spindle. So it was a light bulb moment for her. Now I have spun a bit of the Smaug's diamond waistcoat on my brand new Russian spindle. This was my Spanish peacock purchase this weekend. Take a look. Mike, who is the woodworker genius behind the Spanish peacock, calls this particular wood the Kate Blaney special because it's all the colors of her hair since he has known her. And they collaborate a lot together on different things. So look at that. 
think this is going to look amazing plied. And I love my Russian. Now, I first tried to learn how to support spindle on a Russian, and it was not a good beginner spindle for me. I traded it in for a Tibetan, which was much easier for me to do, so I was a little apprehensive about getting the Russian, but all is well. I love it. It's a bit shorter than <coughs> excuse me, some of his Russian spindles, but it's working well. And have you seen what I've spun so far? A lot. Um, I could have bought more spindles. I love them. In fact, I did buy one more spindle that is not a Russian peacock. And Russian peacock. <laughs> Spanish peacock. Russian spindle. Um, I bought a Tackley, which is not a spindle that the Russian, the uh, Spanish peacock makes. Keep wanting to say Russian peacock. Um, where did I buy this from? Let me see. I think it was called Hip Strings. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Hip Strings. I have your card somewhere. Yeah, here it is. Hip strings, modern spindles, and the fibers that love them. There we go. Ooh, my nails look bad. Um, so it is a Takli. It is kind of a lethal weapon. So it comes with its carbon fiber shaft. I'm never going to be spinning on these when my kids are around. Or my dog. And it goes like the wind. This is the... The Mistral, they named them after winds, unsurprisingly, because they go like the wind. And the Mistral, and the Mistral is a, a wind that comes from the east of Europe, I, Asia really, from Siberia, Russia, and it comes down through France, southern France, across the Alps. They call it the Mistral, and it, it blows. So it, not like that, but it really does spin crazy fast. Spin this up here. And it's meant, a takli is meant for spinning cotton. So it's got a beautiful design, which is what got me. It's got a nice Celtic design. I'm a little concerned about how dangerous this is, though. I won't lie. But I spun on them, and I, I, I want to I wanna collect spindles. So I got me a Takli. Now, it's a carbon fiber shaft and an acrylic whorl. And I, it was between this one and one with a red dragon on it. And I eventually decided to go with the Celtic one. I liked the way this one spun. And it's got its little corks on it, and it's going back into storage. Now, I think I'm going to try spinning my baby camel and Muga silk bats that I made on this one. So because it goes so fast and that camel is just down. It's just downy. Super, super short staple and fine. Two spindles. Let's see. Um Hobbledy Hoy. Hobbledy Hoy. I was so excited that she was at this festival with her mom, Marigold Jen. I really wanted some of the Marigold Jen too. Um but I just cannot resist the Hobbledy Hoy fiber. It drives me nuts. I have. I got some the first day, and then I was dreaming about this all that night, and I had to get it the second day. These are batlings, orange you glad batlings, and these have. Let's see, merino bamboo, soy silk, and sparkle. They're just so much fun, and I love orange and pink together. It makes me think of Bollywood. And look at that. You open these little delightful things up. Spin them. Ugh. I love her stuff. Love her colors. Love her blends. And she is a delightful person in and of herself. Now, what really gets me is her art bats. Her art bats are amazing. So let's take a look at this one. Shall we? Shall we open it up? This is Butterfly Migration, 3.2 ounces. Merino, bamboo, latte silk, soy silk, sparkle, mystery locks. Okay, there are the mystery locks. She leaves them separate so you can work them in however you would like. And these are dyed a green with bits of navy in them. Oh, butterfly migration. Now, I'd love to knit with these. I knit that capucine hat with um, the hand spun from one of her bats. 
I have also woven a scarf where the warp and the weft are hobbledehoy hand spun from bats. One side, two side. Just gorgeous. Love them to bits. Just so fun to spin. I always spin them without any plan. Zero planning, just go. <clears throat> Put you back in your bag. That was butterfly migration. And let's take a look at the second one. Oh, yes. This one is Continental Divide, I think. Continental Drift. Merino, bamboo, soy silk, milk, silk, sparkle, and mystery locks again. So, oh, mystery locks. Whoa. Pink and blue and purple. Now this one, ugh, the inside is this. Reds and turquoise and blue and purple and magenta. Now the other side, you can see why she calls it continental drift. Sparkle and amazing earth tones. Can't wait. I've had such plain fibers on my wheel lately. This will be a nice antidote. Is that all I got from Hobbledy Hoy? Sadly, yes. I wanted it all, but this is what I got. Because I do have, still have some left over from Maryland that I have not yet spun. I'm all blurry. There I am. Okay. <coughs> but wait, there's more. Alice, stay inside. Um, I got to meet Joelle from Wandering Wool. Unique hand-dyed yarns. She is local. She's in Maryland. And this is her North Country sock. Colorway rainbow. Superwash nylon. Superwash merino nylon. 7525. Take a look. Yes, Silly Fru, Wendy Graham. This is a rainbow. So you can knit socks. You can knit... Um, color work where you stripe this with a like a neutral with it like a gray um, but if you knit socks you knit one from the outside and one from the inside so this is squishy and nice and it's gonna be super fun to knit and it was I love festivals you get to meet people and talk to them and Joelle's lovely she has beautiful yarns alrighty um, I'm looking that is not all I got there <laughs> it was really, it was a beautiful day, and I got some time to myself to wander around. I watched the sheepdog do his thing. There were no fewer than four escaped sheep uh, late in the afternoon as they were being loaded onto a truck. They were so confused. Sheep are not smart. Um, and my friend Patricia was saying that there's a lot of um, solar storms right now, and the the magnetic poles of the earth might be switching and she's noticed a lot of her animals including her honeybees are incredibly confused and just seem weird lately so I could explain the sheep's behavior but the poor dog was overworked um, but they were going towards roads and it was kind of comical it was good entertainment for me personally Alice chill alrighty um, so I went to Mediceld my, my friends at the Metaceld farm, Patricia, her husband Sloan, her kids. Her daughter makes and knits amazing sh um, shawls. She's like almost 13 and she's selling them. They're gorgeous. <coughs> they had preserved me because they are special and awesome. With my name on it. I told my daughter, this has my name on it. It's not for you because she eats it all. No, of course. I'll share it with my kids, begrudgingly. So, yes, their maple syrup is second to none, and they've had a couple of not-so-great maple syrup years. Last year's winter, they're in West Virginia. The winter was so harsh that a lot of the trees just suffered greatly, and they didn't want to tap over-tap them so that they could regenerate, basically. They needed to use their sap in the growing rather than giving us maple syrup. And... I'm impressed with that. That just, you know, shows me good steward stewardship of their land and, you know, conscientious thinking about how they manage their resources. So I do appreciate that, but I am glad I got a bottle. 
Beautiful. So I am hoping for, I don't know about this year because it's forecast to be another rough winter, but fingers crossed we'll get some good sugaring weather in the near future. Okay, um, what did I get there? Let me show you. I got a bobbin lace lesson, and what I learned from the bobbin lace lesson from her friend Judy, who is an expert, and Patricia knows how to do it too, and she's sending me all sorts of resources for it now. I learned that my setup is not a good one. My pattern is not a beginner pattern. I told you, mother-in-law, there had to be something more simple. So Judy and Patricia are taking care of me. They're sending me simple, uh, just a simple one stitch repeat that I can just get that stitch down and then move on to the next one. So and resources for educating myself and so forth. But it seems like the kind of craft where you really need one-on-one -on -one instruction and hands-on and in-person instruction. So we'll see how it goes. But I'm moving on to the next step, so I'm very happy. <coughs> so what did I do there? I got maple syrup. I got a sweater's worth of yarn. <laughs> I couldn't resist because I have knit with this yarn before. And I also got an amazing discount because I bought a sweater's worth. This is the Dorset Down Frisian, 100% wool. It's about 200 yards for 3.3 and a quarter ounce. It's going to dye up beautifully. I knit my husband a hat out of this. This is from their sheep that they have milled. How many did I get? One, two, three, four, five. know how it's going to be dyed, but I, I think it's going to be a cardigan. It's a two-ply. It's squishy. It's not super soft, but it's plenty soft, and I love it. It's going to be my Meduseld sweater. I'm so excited. Um, I really loved knitting this stuff, and I can't wait to do the planning of that because it's got the dyeing. It's going to have the knitting. It's going to be a lot of awesome. Uh, what else did I get at Meduseld? I got this rose geranium skin cream from Three Little Birds Herbs. I love geranium. I love the scent of it, and it's very calming, I think. And the rose is not overpowering because I'm not a fan of rose-scented things. But the combination of those two is amazing all natural stuff, almond oil, sunflower, jojoba, I love saying jojoba, jojoba, coconut oils, aloe vera, distilled water, essential oils, beeswax, and vitamin E. Fancy, fancy. Um, I also picked up some dyes. I was out of black and purple, my favorites. So I like to put black on top of everything, apparently, when I dye things. And I'm feeling like that's the end of things. <laughs> yeah. I ate some I ate some barbecue. Uh, I petted the camel, junior, I petted some llamas, bunnies, alpacas. They talked to me. The alpacas did. Do you know what they said? They said, mmm, mmm, mmm. I can't believe I'm making alpaca noises on, on this episode. But don't I sound like an alpaca? They're really cool. Is that, oh, oh, Patricia gave me some of, speaking of alpacas and other camelids, <clears throat> I got a bag's worth of Rodrigo. That is the Meduseld alpaca. Isn't he gorgeous? I call him Rodrigo the dirty alpaca because he's constantly rolling in the dust and he's filthy. But this is lovely, clean, Rodrigo fiber and I have some more of this and now I don't know if I'll blend it with something else or just go ahead and spin it as is they have a great yarn I didn't see it this year but they have a great blend of Rodrigo and wool and I knit some mittens out of it and it's amazing so I'm, I'm gonna say that's it do you think that's enough it was a wonderful time and it was what I needed after the week or two I had had 
My grandmother, my son, got pneumonia. Um, yes, Oliver, that you saw last week, that cough, that was developing into pneumonia. So, but he's fine. Getting him rechecked today. He's doing better. Um, all right, well, <laughs> let's look at spinning, shall we? And, and if I've left anything out, I met a lot of people. And let's see, in be raindrops, between raindrops, I got to meet her. And I know I'm going to leave people out. Because my memory is like a sieve right now. I cannot be caffeinated enough to function normally lately. Let me show you what I've been spinning. Um, I finished my white Jacob. Here it is. It's about 220 yards. It's of a two-ply. I'm thinking sport-ish. There it is. Now, I really like my second two skeins better than my first. Which one? This one was my first. Look at how spirally the plies are. And I changed my plying methods for the second two skeins. I used, I was using the smallest whorl to ply. The smallest whorl to spin and to ply. I went up a whorl size, which is not typically what I do when I spin, when I spin woolen. I usually, <coughs> excuse me ply on a smaller whorl than I have just done the singles on to give the yarn a little more structure because it's worsted, it's not, or woolen rather, it doesn't, it's not as tightly spun basically, it's, it's got more air in it than a worsted spun. But I went up a whorl size for the plying and I got a much nicer ply twist for these two. So I'll probably alternate this one in with these lovely ones. And these are softer than this one too, and I just like them better. So that is one third of my Jacob completed. Let me show you what I'm working on next in the Jacob realm. Okay, the mixed part, which is here. You can see it's brown and white that I could not separate out. And that was genuinely blended in parts like this. This is clean, really washed up well. Now I have made one hand carded rollag out of the mixed. So you get an idea, it's going to be like a salt and peppery color, this next bit. Um, so carding has commenced, and away we go. The third third, the last third, is the all dark. And there are my hand cards in there. Um, so, there's a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel here. I can see to the bottom of the basket now. So I'm really enjoying this, Jacob. And it's, you know, always a learning experience. I know, Alice. I know. My father is out in the garden, and she's, like, tapping me like this on my leg. Like, open the door now so I can play with my boyfriend. She adores him. He feeds her out of the garden, so. Um... So that's the spinning. I showed you my spindles. I did do some more on my yak silk water weed. <coughs> um, I, I left something out of acquisitions. It was a gift from a dear friend who is, oh, I left two things out of acquisitions. All right, let me show you this one first. Gift from my dear friend who is retired and is moving to Florida, as, as all people seem to do. And she, her mother, um, her grandmother was a French woman. And I used to teach French in the same school where Suzanne worked. So when she sees fiber things, she thinks of me. And when she sees French things, she thinks of me. So I was given, these must have been her grandmother's, all these gloves. Like, I have small hands. Let's see. Like some tiny child woman wore these gloves. <laughs> oh, look at the front. There are a bunch of them. I don't think I can get my hands in here. Let's see. <gasps> Barely. I guess they stretch. So I have pairs of, I don't know what kind of gloves these are. They seem to be a knit fabric. And I have a couple pairs of leather ones. Anyway, 
she gave me these and then she gave me all sorts of lace I believe this was a, a dicky of some sort some sort of collar by says by timely so and then bits of lace it looks crocheted that's crocheted all sorts of bits of lace more crocheted lace this is tatted I think <sighs> more lace more lace and then what I really enjoyed out of here were these needles for household repairs made in Redditch England and these were a special gift from the needle assortment a needle assortment from the National Handcraft Fad of the Month Club from Des Moines Iowa and you've got pictures of all the different applications for these needles super cool I've never seen anything like this I'm gonna open it up for you some of them are missing looks only like one is missing I'm missing a carpet needle you guys but I have an upholstery needle a beading needle a packing needle and a sailmaker's needle I'm set I'm gonna make some sailcloth for my boat how cool is that that is cool one of them is rusted but it looks like this was a kit this came with a kit and you know because it was a special gift needle assortment fad of the month club does it have a year on it you it says you can repair upholstery carpets deck chairs sacks sun blinds rugs tarp tarpaulins I don't know how you say the tar that word car seats chairs tents matting bags lampshades sails DIY y'all now then she gave me this let's see what's in here oh there's a piece of paper in here and there's an ancient rubber band around it let's see what the paper says it is a pattern for a crochet coat hanger that her grandmother must have written out made some mistakes on it too <laughs> crochet coat hanger page two so this must be just you know you crochet around a hanger super cool now what are you going to use when you crochet how about some of these okay some of these things I don't know what they are let's take a look crochet hooks are so fine they come with these covers um, key to somebody's heart okay take a look at this one that's not gonna focus but that's a very fine metal crochet hook all of these now I've got this in, what the heck is this it's got a needle on one end and a ball on the other no clue maybe that's the carpet needle um, what's, this is a DPN looks like it's bone or maybe Bakelite maybe I think it's Bakelite it's a DPN or maybe a cable needle this I've got no clue again I think that's Bakelite and cable needle big fat one who knows okay all of these are crochet hooks and yes some of them are covered so I'm ready for beading I am ready for beading this is insane I I need to reorganize my craft room just so I have I have room for stuff okay under this mountain of lace and gloves are my show notes so let me show you one last thing I picked up and this was a gift from my friend Angie because I said I like that buy that for me and she did she said she said it was from her her supported spindling lesson yo I got a penangular brooch look at that it's got Celtic a Celtic design and I love it and this is gonna look amazing with a shield maiden come on focus um, I love it it was from Tuatha T-U-A-T-H-A they were at Maryland sheep and wool and they were here and they were oh there we go they were extremely lovely people and Angie got an amber necklace there too it was beautiful so yeah 
You'll hold your shawl together. <coughs> Works in progress. I have two. And then we're going to close this out because I've been talking and talking and talking, and I have a huge mess around me that needs to get sorted. Okay, I have my worsted boxy with one sleeve finished. And that sleeve is too tight. I think I, if I just rip out the bind off, it'll be okay. There it is. I, I don't know about this, you guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on today and take a look. It's been ignored and thrown in a bag, and it's all wrinkled and gross. And I have a million ends to weave in, and I'm just wondering if this yarn is cursed, quite frankly. More about this next week. I just don't want to talk about it too much. <laughs> it's out of Malabrigo Rios in the Paris Night colorway. And I knit it on US 9s, which are five and a half millimeters. It was fun. I was worried I was going to run out of yarn, so I feel like I didn't make the back long enough. But then I found a whole bunch of scraps. I'm going to pull this out and do the other sleeve and see how, and then block it, because I can't tell anything with Superwash until I've, I've blocked it. I mean, it goes on my body. It fits fine. It has ease. I don't know if it has enough ease for this particular sweater. It's got probably eight inches of ease, but I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. All right, the other thing I'm knitting, I'm in love with, of course. Oh, summer, oh, summer, summer of S, season of scraps. I'm like a one-trick pony. These are all my knit-alongs, SOS. So if you're doing scrap stuff, any scrap stuff, hashtag it, um, FTSOS on Instagram. Also, put it on Ravelry in the thread. There are prizes. It's going till November, end of November. And I have worked a lot on my scrap blanket. What is new this week? Did, was this there last week? That might be. Yeah, that was there. That's hand spun fin. I've added this beautiful Neapolitan, let me get my screen back, Neapolitan ice cream looking bit. And then a lot of this is new. I think I was about to hear last week. So all of this is new, starting from Socks at Rock, Sanguine Griffin. This was from Seashore Sharon. It's like a little watermelon bit. This was HD Yarns, a self-striping sock. This I made my vitamin D out of. It's a um, merino silk. This is a little bit bigger. You can tell it's hand spun, so it's not as uniform. This is a merino angora sample, and I um, blended merino with some of my friend Jill's Angora fiber. This is like a, a Pagewood Farm bamboo blend. This was some from Seashore Sharon. Uh, again, Seashore Sharon looks like a Regia maybe. And then this is also from Seashore Sharon and it, it was an interesting blend but it's a beautiful red. I'm not sure. It was almost like a Volmiza type of yarn but not as tightly plied. Now I'm thinking I need six to seven more triangles to make this as long as I want it to be. And it's just so much fun. Got a huge bag of uh, the scraps. Rather than um, getting knit up, they seem to multiply. Like, because people are sending me stuff, which is super fun. Because um, otherwise, I just repeat my own scraps over and over again. Might get a little monoton monotonous. But that's what I love about this blanket. It is never monotonous. It's different yarns all the time, different colors all the time. It's super fun. I Okay, this is a long episode, so I'm going to save and ask Fiber Town for next time. So I just want to say thank you to all you lovely people, you Fiber Townies, you friends of mine, for hanging out with me and looking at my stuff and telling me about your stuff and loving my dog. That is lovely. So until next week, I hope you all have a great time. <laughs>